Hello and welcome to From the Desk Of. I'm Tim Moody. I'm the Public Information Officer with the Randolph County School System. I'm here with our Superintendent, Dr. Stephen Ganey. Each month we have the opportunity to head out to one of our schools and, uh, and uh, talk about the great things that are going on throughout our school district. Of course, it's summertime now. There's no school in place, but we are out here on the campus of Gray's Chapel Elementary School. And, do and Dr. Ganey, before we get into a lot of the things that are going on, just give you a chance to talk about this great school. Well, Tim, this is a great school and staff is just wonderful. Uh, you, any classroom you go into during the school day, when you see what's going on in there, you just know kids are getting a great deal here. Um, just, just can't say enough about the teaching staff and support staff at this school. And also want to uh, point out the principal, Ross Reeves. He's just finishing his second year here. He's a veteran principal for our school system. He spent a long time as principal of Farmer Elementary School. And then he came last year in 1718 to this school to be the principal. So very proud of Ross and proud of the direction he's taken the school. Uh, in addition to the staff, uh, it's a great community, very supportive of this school. Uh, the PTO has been very supportive of the school. In fact, uh, they just put air conditioning into the uh, gym and they, they handled that entire project and uh, that's just a, that was a great uh, added plus for this school and just so, I think we need to always make sure we're not only thinking staff, but thinking the parents and the community that support these schools because that, that goes a long way in a school's success is when you have a very supportive community and parent group like the PTO here. So uh, just a wonderful place for kids to come to school. It has a lot of tradition here and I always love coming to see the school in action. As you mentioned, we're in the summertime, so the kids are all gone and the, kid, and the teachers are gone, and, but it is a fun place to be during the school year when you see the kids, they enjoy being here, they look forward to coming to this school and have a lot of pride in this school. All right, well, today is June 19th as we are into our summer schedule. Our last day of school was June 7th, and just a couple of days ago, there was a really important meeting at uh, uh, the county commissioners at the courthouse in Ashboro and uh, they unveiled the budget for uh, the new year and I want to give you a chance to talk about that because it certainly impacts our school system. Well we did uh, just uh, receive final word on our budget, the local budget from the county commissioners and, and Tim, you know, I, I can only say thank you to them. Uh, I enjoy working with our Board of Education. I enjoy working with our county commissioners. It is a lot of fun to me to uh, interact with them and see them work uh, behind the scenes to help our kids and help our staffs throughout the school system and, and so we had some really good news, really good news. Uh, we did get an increase in uh, funding, $1,056,000 in current expense funding. So what that's going to do is it's going to cover our continuation cost and also allow us to raise our local supplement again this year. Coming up 1920 by 0.25%. And what's important is now that'll be three out of four school years that we've raised local supplements. So uh, very excited about that. Appreciate the commissioner's help with that. They know that's important to us. But here's the other thing. It's not just important to us and our staff. It's important to them. And they've made it very clear publicly that that is one of their priorities is to continue to help us with the supplement and help our staff. So uh, we also uh, received an additional $100,000 in capital outlay funding. There's, we get a special kind of capital outlay funding that supports our nine-year facility upgrade repair plan. And, and they increased that funding by $100,000. So overall, our, our total funding, capital outlay and current expense, increased by $1,156,000 the other night. And I can only say thank you uh, because uh, they, they worked hard. Uh, I love interacting with them, like I said, and I, I know the hard work they put in in the months prior to finalizing the budget. I know the support we get from our Board of Education as their conversations are going on between elected officials and between my office and elected officials. So I just appreciate everybody's teamwork. It was just a great night all the way around. And the, the, the thing about what happens with the budget is the, the, the people who benefit the most in the end are the kids. And you have two groups of elected officials, our Board of Education and our County Commissioners, that there's no doubt when you're around them and you interact with them, there's no doubt their focus is what's good for kids. And what's good for kids is, it, 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 you know, you're talking about taking care of facilities the kids will come to school and use. You're talking about uh, thing, uh, resources that we need to support staff. So we have the, the very best possible staff in the classrooms with kids. And it all comes out every year in the budget when the commissioners, they continue to step forward and continue to help us push this school system forward. And I'm just, I'm just delighted and, and just want to say a big thank you to them and um, our Board of Education for their work to get to this process as we start uh, moving towards the 1920 school year. So Dr. Ganey, as we uh, end one school year and begin to move into another school year, which will officially begin on July the 1st, 
Uh, of course, uh, it's typical that we would have a number of personnel changes, and we like to use these monthly interviews to update everyone on the changes that have taken place. So. Uh, g give us uh, the lowdown on the changes that we've had. Well, since our last video, uh, we've had three board meetings, May 20th, June 3rd, and June 17th. May 20th, we uh, did uh, move David Cross from Principal Braxton Craven School to Principal at Archdale Trinity Middle School. Very excited about that. David's done a great job at Braxton Craven the last two years and excited to see what he'll do at Archdale Trinity Middle School. Then on June 3rd, uh, we um, hired Norman Walker he was an applicant from outside the system. He's coming to be assistant principal at Randall Middle School. He brings a lot of experience as administrator and uh, school experience, and so very excited for him to join our school system. That night also, we named Laura Pop, who's been the lead teacher at Uwari Ridge 612. She was named to be the assistant principal at Uwari Ridge 612. There were two transfers that night on June 3rd as well. Anthony Grosh moved from being the principal at Uwari Ridge 612, where he's been for three years to replace David Cross at uh, Braxton Craven School as the principal. So excited about that, excited about that move for Anthony. And we also, uh, there was a, another assistant principal move and it was uh, Tony O'Neill has been 100% Hopewell Elementary School as the assistant principal for the last two years. And that night we changed and, and now he's gonna be split starting next year, 50% Hopewell and 50% at Archdale Elementary School. So very excited about that. And then on the 17th, we have one move uh, Kim Leak, one of our former principals, she was a great principal for our school system. She served as the principal of New Market Elementary School and she was the principal of Trendale Elementary School when I got here. Uh, I don't have anything but positive to say about her as a school leader. She's coming back to be a 50% assistant principal at John Lawrence Elementary School next year and I'm just excited to have her back. She was a star for our school system and very excited to see her joined the John Lawrence staff with Anthony Ward and the principal, and he's excited. So it's always good when you when you have somebody that was so talented and so successful, and you get to bring them back. So uh, very excited for her to be back, and excited about all the moves that have happened uh, so far. And uh, we'll just continue to work through the summer. If as we have vacancies, we'll move quickly. Right now, the only vacancy we have is we have the Uwari 612 principalship that's open, and we will be. Um, we're, we're working right now to hire that person and so uh, hopefully by the next video we'll be uh, talking about who that individual is. Well as I said June 7th was the last day of school but it wasn't just the last day of school it was also graduation night for our six traditional high schools. Uh, of course big highlight of the year is walk, uh, watching those graduates walk across the stage. I want to give you a chance just to talk about that. Well I've always loved high school graduation. Um, I loved it when I was a high school principal. I just love seeing the kids reaction to that event and you know I went to two. Uh, a lot of times it's difficult with the size of the county and everybody graduating about the same time but we do have uh, Trinity and Wheatmore. Trinity graduates at six, Wheatmore at eight. So on the year I go there I can see both of those and Eastern does our graduation at six and Providence Grove at eight so when I go to that uh, one of those graduations I can see both of them and so it usually takes about four years to get around the system because remember we had the early college graduation back up in the middle of May but um, I saw Trinity and I saw Wheatmore's graduation and uh, just great great to watch the kids and see the staff the pride on the staff's faces the pride on the families and the uh, you know, with the family and friends in the stands. Uh, just great graduations all the way around. Brian Toth, I want to say a big thank you to him and his staff at Trinity High School for the work they did to prepare for the uh, ceremony and then to uh, carry out the ceremony. I want to say congratulations to all the speakers. The student speakers at both events, Trinity High School, Wheatmore High School, did wonderful. And Eric Johnson and his staff at uh, Wheatmore High School did a great job. So just a great night. and and. What was maybe even made it even more special was just watching staff deal with the whole situation so calm. It was the first time I've been here six years and it's the first time we've had to have graduations inside because of the weather and everybody was calm. The children were calm. The people who came as family members and friends, they understood things were gonna be different with it being inside. Some fewer seats. We had uh, we had live stream of the uh, graduations to different parts of the buildings, and people could also watch it uh, live from you know not even coming to the campus. So I just was very I, I just can only say how much I appreciate the communities for how well they helped us handle a very bad night for weather. That was you know and and you know two days out we saw what was coming and it was going to be rain and no one wants to deal with that. The, 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 Everybody wants to be out in the stadium, but you, when you can't do it, you can't do it. But 
I tell you what, we, we have a tremendous community at all, around all of these schools, and they, they make a lot of things work and help us make a lot of things work. And that's a night where if you look back, that, that's going to be one of our finest moments because it was very positive atmosphere. I heard it from everybody else, all the leadership team members and board members who went to other graduations. It was one of our finest moments because everybody made the night special for the kids in spite of the weather. And you can only, you, you have to appreciate that. And the kids always respond. They, it's, just, it's just fun to watch them. Now the next step will be watch what they do after graduation because we have some talented kids that walked out of our high schools uh, that night and then, like I say, in mid-May from the early college. Let's sit back and watch what they do with the future because there's some very talented kids coming out of the, the Randolph County school system. Right. Well, and you talked about the inclement weather on uh, graduation night and of course, you also touched on the fact that uh, those who could not attend a ceremony were able to watch it live uh, thanks to our media and technology mm -hmm. team. I want to give you a chance to give some props to those folks for their hard work to be able uh, to put out what was relatively a glitch-free um, broadcast of our graduation ceremonies. Oh yeah, and we've, we've been live streaming graduation for a while, but you know, when you have to depend on that because of the weather, people, you know, a lot of people, I don't know that a lot of people knew that until this time, but wasn't it great that when they had, when we had people who had to depend on it, it worked. Yeah. It worked. It had been working for years prior, but, you know, it's, and it worked because of the great work of Sheena Creech, and her staff and Dale Brinkley and his staff, between the media services, the technology staffs, they had it all planned out and it worked, it worked beautifully. And so, you know, that doesn't happen without planning and without effort and without wanting to make it special for the kids in the community. So I'm glad, you know, I'm glad we've been doing it, but I'm extremely excited that it was there and working the way it needed to for people when we had to depend on it. Because, right. you know, we had groups that at some schools, that, you know, I, they would have the uh, graduation in the gym, but there may be people in the auditorium it was live streamed in there. So it just uh, just says a lot to, about the staff members' uh, effort, attention, and attention to detail. So. so one of the things that we like to do at our monthly Board of Education meetings, among other things, is uh, to recognize uh, great accomplishments by our students and our staff members. and. Um, typically in the summer months we don't have a lot of recognitions but for June's uh, board meeting um, we did have this time and I want to give you a chance to give a shout out to those who are recognized beginning with our outstanding elementary school math teacher. Well uh, Christy Hutchins has just been uh, recognized for outstanding elementary math teacher award as a recipient of that award and, and she is wonderful. She's a fifth grade teacher at Trendale Elementary School and um, she you, if you go in her classroom there's no question no question how good she is and uh, just great to see yeah you know, I, I, I wish we could do more I wish we could do more because there's people doing great stuff all over our school system all over this state in classrooms for kids and she's one of those people just does a great job every day the kids benefit every day by coming in her classroom so I just say congratulations to her and thank you for being a part of our school system because she is very important to us and she's very important to the kids that come in her classroom every day and um, just glad to know that we have awards such as this one that can be uh, given to recognize people for their great work because she is one of the great ones. Right. And some other recognitions uh, focused on some athletes, some student athletes in our school system, uh, Randleman High baseball team, Eastern Randolph softball team, and a couple of track athletes from those same two schools. So I'll give you a chance to talk about those. Well, Tim, I want to start with the two individuals we recognize. They, they were state runner-ups in track. Amaya Brooks from Eastern Randolph High School was state runner-up in the triple jump at state championships the other weekend. And Clayton Gentry from Randleman High School, he was the state runner-up in long jump. And just two great athletes. And I just want to say a big thank you to them for for uh, the way they represent our school system. Um, they're just obviously very talented individuals. And we continue to have athletes and students and other uh, activities go out and represent our school system and their individual schools in such a positive manner. So just congratulations to Amaya and Clayton for their great, great uh, performances and, and just wanted to know how proud we are of them. But Tim, we recognized two teams as well the other night and uh, we recognized Eastern Randolph High School's uh, softball team. They were the state runners up in uh, 2A softball coached by Lavette Graham and um, we also recognized Random High School's baseball team coached by Jake Smith. They were the state runner-ups in 2A baseball and um, you know uh, just want to want to say thank you to those kids and those coaches for how they represented our school system and their school communities. It was a great weekend. Uh, I told the kids the other night that what, what a privilege for me 
they both softball and baseball played on the same college campus, University of North Carolina at Greensboro. So I actually, on Saturday of that weekend, I got to go watch Eastern Randolph High School play softball and walk across the parking lot, essentially a little bit, maybe a little bit farther than one parking lot, and sit down in the baseball stadium and watch Randolph High School play that night. And I'm uh, just very proud of them. They did uh, finish the state runner-up. That's a tremendous accomplishment. Uh, thinking about all the teams in the state that would have loved to have been in their shoes in that state championship, getting to a state championship is a tremendous honor. It is a playing for a state championship is something not many kids get to do. And, and I know these kids value that experience, and, and I just want to say a big thank you to them again for how they represented our school system. I was so proud to watch them compete, and, you know, the games were, the games were well played, and they were, you know, t tight games and all, and, and just great coaches guiding the kids and, and encouraging the kids, not giving up on the kids, and making great decisions, and knowing you could see the relationship between the kids and the coaches, and it was very positive. So just, just a great, great atmosphere, of both, both the softball state championship and the baseball state championship, and just want to tell the kids, just make sure they know how proud our school system is of them. Another thing that we like to do at the end of each school year is really take the opportunity to thank some very special people and, and groups and organizations. We do that in a few ways, but one of the things that we do is publish an ad in the, in the Courier Tribune recognizing all of, of the community partners, not only at uh, Central Office, but at all 31 of our schools. I know you want to give a, a public thank you to those groups right now. Well, Tim, I, I, I love when that ad comes out. I always, I, I know you put a lot of work into trying to collect all that information and appreciate the principals and school staffs getting that information to you because it is important. It is important we recognize people who are helping us and we couldn't do this without support from these from these community partners. It, and it's just a tremendous picture when that when that ad comes out and you see all the names and all the support that goes to the schools throughout the county from this school community to this school community, it's just unbelievable. And I just want to say a big thank you to the community partners because, again, we couldn't do all this without their help, you know. And, and um, it, there's so many things, you know, even, even with that ad, there's still things we probably don't capture every year. We try our best and, and um, try to get every, every single uh, group that does something or individual does something for our schools. And, and I know in my heart there's still people out there and, and we would never overlook them on purpose, but we do know that this is just unbelievable the amount of support we get in the school system from the community. And um, I appreciate your work on that. I think that is one of the, the most important things we do every year is say thank you back to the community in a big way. And I hope, I hope they know how much we appreciate them because it's, uh, you know, there's so many things on a school campus and in a school system that are needed to take care of kids. and, and uh, support from the community goes a long way to help us as well. So just, uh, they, we need their help and they always step up. The partners always step up. I've, uh, you know, it seems like every time I turn around, somebody's telling me a story about what some group has done for their school. So just very proud of our community. Well, going back to the end of the school year or right before the end of the school year, we actually had a, a really nice accomplishment by one of the cafeterias in our school system. I want to give you a chance to talk about that. Well, Tim, we did receive word the other day of a great honor for the cafeteria at Ramsdale Elementary School. They received a 100 rating for their sanitation grade. I just want to say congratulations to Tammy Cantor and her staff. They do a great job. Uh, when you go in the cafeteria at Ramsdale Elementary School, Ms. Cantor is always very upbeat, very positive. So is her staff. And, and quite frankly, you see that in all the cafeterias around our school system. And I think sometimes people don't realize that we actually run little mini restaurants in every school. That's what the cafeteria operation really is. It's a little restaurant that holds the same standards as far as sanitation grades and, and different things with preparation of food. So it's very impressive if you look at the, the operation from if you stand back and just look at all that's going on in the cafeteria every day as far as providing the lunches, meals for, uh, lunches and meals for the children. But um, just want to say a big thank you. Uh, to Ms. Cantor and to her staff for the great work they do every day and for all the other cafeteria staff managers throughout the school system. And I want to say a big thank you to Kelly Green, our Director of Child Nutrition Services. She continues to do a great job and uh, we, we've been fortunate with our Child Nutrition Services Department over the years and uh, just very excited about this honor. It's well deserved and, and uh, just congratulations to Ramsdale Elementary School and Ms. Cantor. So let's shift for just a moment from our school nutrition department to our transportation department. And I uh, want to make sure the community is aware that this summer 
our transportation team is going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, they're actually going to be out at some schools. The dates and the times uh, of all, and the schools are all posted on our uh, district homepage of our website. Give parents who plan on their children riding the bus next school year the opportunity to come out, meet with transportation staff members, ask questions, uh, get some details, and even have the chance to sign um, their child up as a bus rider for next school year. Dr. Gain just want to kind of use that to uh, give you a chance just to talk about our transportation team a little bit and uh, what all they have to do to get ready for another school year. Well, Tim, uh, this is an example of what I see every day out of that group. Um, you know, a couple of years ago we did a video it was entitled Hidden Heroes. And a lot of times people don't see what's going on with the technology staff or the child nutrition staff or the maintenance facility staff. They don't see that or the transportation staff. There's a lot of work goes on. They have to set routes and make sure they've got the, the uh, bus stop set. And I've watched this group and uh, uh, Wendy Anderson is a tremendous leader and you know, it, it's, it's a tough job in, in transportation because you know, if the bus doesn't come at the right time or a child gets missed or whatever, doesn't get picked up in the morning, that becomes, that sometimes becomes a very negative situation and, or a bus is late bringing kids home. But I can tell you, I've watched the transportation department and there is no lack of effort over there. And there's no lack of trying to take care of kids at all costs. There is no lack of effort at all. They want to, they want to do what's right for kids and this is another example of that. You know, getting out trying to get as much information now as they can to set routes, set bus stops, and make the start of school for the 1920 school year as smooth as it can be. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect with all the moving parts. It takes a while to get everybody back in routine because all of a sudden we crank back up in August and you, you have student drivers coming back to high schools, parent drivers dropping off kids, and buses. And then when you go to Mill and Elementary, you have parent drivers and buses. And, you know, we, we go a couple months and get out of routine. So it takes us a while, but steps like this only help the opening go smoother. So thank you to Wendy Anderson and her staff. I had a chance to go down the other day. They were having kind of an end of year breakfast. And just, you know, you go in the transportation department, you see people are doing the routing. And so they're collecting all this information. You see some guys that are, they're, they're the mechanics, they're working on the buses, keeping them on the road. And you kind of can get blown away when you start looking, when you go in the garage and you start thinking about all that goes on in that department from the garage where they're working on the buses, maintaining them. Um, to, to the planning of where the bus is driving all and picking up kids. You can get blown away in a hurry on the massive operation that's going on down there to take care of kids. So thank you to Wendy and thank you to her staff for just another step in trying to take care of kids because this, this, is, this is the kind of thing that just really when you, when you see it happening, you, you just, your appreciation is really high, level of appreciation is really high because this is just one more step to try and take care of kids. So as we close out our interview for June 2019, uh, Dr. Ganey, I'll just turn it over to you to give you a chance just to, to talk about summer in, in the Randolph County school system and anything else that might be going on. Well, you know, uh, we're right now, you know, working to get ready for 1920 school year. I think I've said before, a lot of getting ready for the next school year starts kind of in January of the current school year. So we've been looking at things as we're shutting down one school year, we're getting ready for the next. It's been a very exciting school year. It started in a very unusual fashion, you know, two hurricanes and a snowstorm before we ever got to the winter break. I, I don't know, I, I, I can remember when we got to winter break, what are we gonna do about the winter? You know, we had one day that had not been used that we could use without having to make up if we missed for uh, inclement weather. I, I, you know, I'm, I usually remember numbers better than this, but I don't remember how many consecutive days we went to school from when we came back from winter break in January to March 29, I think was that first teacher work day. But I've never seen anything like that either. What, what the kids and the staff and the parents did to make that work from January to that first work day at the end of March was unbelievable. I, I know people got tired. I know the kids got tired, the staff got tired, parents got tired. Everybody was tired and I heard nobody complaining. I think, you know, everybody knew the situation that we had been through a very rough fall semester and I think everybody respected we had to get school back in routine and we had to have a long run like that. And I'm just, I just can't say anything but thank you to, to uh, staff, students and parents for making the, the 18, 19 school year work the way they did because it was a great year. And yes, when you wind up uh, with two hurricanes early in the year and then a snowstorm before you get to the winter break, 
it makes you scratch your head about how the rest of the year is going to play out. But it played out well for this school system it's because those three groups stepped up and made it work. And um, that's what happens in our school system. You know, those three groups, staff, students, and parents, are always uh, interacting and making things work in the Randolph County school system. And just can't say enough about the, the members of those groups because we appreciate them and, and uh, more than they realize. And, and their role is, is so positive and so, so important to our school system success, probably even more than, than they realize at times because they're just doing what they, what they know to do, be great kids, be great staff members, be great parents supporting the school system. So thank you to, thank you to all three groups. And thank you, Dr. Ganey, and thank you to Principal Ross Reeves and his great staff here at Grace Chapel Elementary School. Dr. Ganey, if you recall, it was uh, a few years back that we were doing interviews in your office and then we moved them out to school campuses. Next month, we will have been to all 31 of our school campuses. We're going to be at Hopewell Elementary next month and then we'll start back over again. So. Well, and it's, it's exciting to come out to the schools because we started talking and one of the first things we talked about today was the county commissioner's budget and all. And I ride around this school system. We have older schools. Uh, this school has been here a long time. We have some newer schools. You know, a lot of different, different ages on the schools. But all of our facilities look great. Mm -hmm. And that's because there's a long history of commissioners and board of education members insisting on our facilities being in great shape. And so, you know, when I ride up and I come to Grace Chapel and I think about how old this school is and I look at how the condition it is and, you know, the maintenance and facility staff has stepped in for years and taken care of these schools, but we had to have the resources to do it. And those two groups of elected officials have always made it a priority and it's exciting. So, so it's great to be able to showcase these schools with these videos. All right, well, thank you again, Dr. Ganey. Thank you to the community members for allowing us to visit with you. Thank you to Randolph Communications, and we look forward to seeing you again in July.